Hey guys, how's it going? Ghosty Rich here today, and today we're going to be installing this CBI front bumper on this Nissan Frontier 2023. Other goodies we'll be doing is we're going to install a winch in it. We're going to also install a front light bar. And if you watched the last video, we installed the aux beam in this. And the reason why we did that is we wanted to be able to control the switch and possibly some other stuff down the road. But yeah, you've seen us install that. Now we're going to jump onto the second part. So to install this front bumper, First off, they have a very good video. You should go take a look at it, but it's always good to watch multiple videos so you get different angles. So let's go ahead and get this started. So if you remember, Canadian Crew's in here. This is his vehicle. So if you wanna go see another perspective of the video, definitely go check out his channel. I'll have a link in the description. Let's start off with these. Come over here, pop these up. They do not need to come all the way out. All we do is we come over here, you just pop them up halfway like that. And then from there, just leave them loose, we can lift that out after. Now, if you do lift it out with these in there, just a warning, they can pop a little bit high and out of the way and really drive you nuts, like they'll actually jump out and then you could lose them in the engine bay. So, what I like to do is just get them all started, just like that, and then you can pop them out just by pulling the head up. Sometimes you have to wiggle them in a circular motion just because they are in a little bit of a barb. So right about here, you're going to need a T20. You're going to want to go ahead, put it right in here and unscrew it. You'll literally see a big silver screw down there. And then what we'll do is, since this is a magnetic driver, I usually leave it in by one thread in the plastic. And we're going to just make sure there's probably, yeah, there's a few here. It's actually all one piece, even though you can't really see that from the front. We have some big rigs driving by. That one comes out, one more here, which is gonna be right there. And then what we're gonna do is take everything off this panel so we don't lose it in the engine bay. So right here, if you even get under this plastic, let's show you right here, because this will, look at that. So see how I'm lifting that tab? So you bring in your popping tool like this. So I'm gonna try and do that from over here. Just one sec here, there. Kyle, if you can actually just pull out on the grill a little bit, or yeah, that piece right there, just on the corner, a little bit, there. It's now gone around it, see, okay? That one's out too, because I put this tool around there, and again, just continue on. It's gonna get harder for you to see because there's less light right there, but basically there, I lifted that one too. We'll see if it slides past, yeah, it just did. And that's all you're doing. This is the part you wanna lift, this little plastic tab. So like I said, I got under here, lifted a little bit. So it went around the barbed clip that is on your grill. So I didn't actually try to bet, I bent this down just a tiny bit, but I didn't wanna to put too much pressure on it because that's how you break those tabs. And what I did is I just lifted the plastic piece that's actually retaining that little barb. Best way when taking this out, actually go underneath the whole section. If you try to just lift the center section out, it'll get jammed up and you'll probably wreck this plastic. If you don't care about it, then don't worry about it. Looking past your yellow handle, you'll go ahead and see this. It's a press tab. Squish, wiggle, pull out. You can even leave this off to the side. It's not a big deal. Or you could remove this, but you don't need to. Okay, now these center tabs. I'm gonna see if I can show you on the video. Literally. All you're doing is you wrap your finger around and press up on them and slide them back. Now, it's best to start it at the farthest end always because then you can actually put a little bit of pressure on them and actually keep them worked out. Just like I just showed you before, there's one that's just past this. Rather than removing this, go ahead and press on it. There we go. So you just pop it just like that and then the rest, again, just showing you. See if my camera will focus in on that lighted area right there. You press up on it and squeeze in, constantly leaving a little bit of pressure, and these should start to slide through, just like that. So again, press, press, take it and safely remove it. And that is the front grill off. So if you're gonna start and uh, try and remove your front grill and swap it out to something else, that's how you remove the front grill. And now you're a pro, just go ahead, get this underneath and pull these up, just so they pop up. Let's see if I can get it. Wow, these ones actually have some uh, dirt in there so they seal up nicely. Come on. There we go. After that, just pull them out and put them with 
your pile or in your separate pile, whatever you want to do. Right here, what we're going to need to do is take a Phillips and we're going to have to remove these clips. Now, again, some people might want to use an impact gun. Just be careful if you are because it's very easy to melt the heads of these screws. Just drop that one. Now the other trick that you can do, which we might do when we put this back in, I have this pretty close against here. You can either use a ratchet with a Phillips or you just turn your tire. And then if you turn your tire inward, you should be able to get that. On this side, go ahead, pop this out. It's just a, the tiniest of Christmas tree poppers. You could probably get it with your fingers actually. Let's see. Huh, got it with my fingers. You don't actually need the Christmas tree popper. This side. <laughs> Got it again. So, in there, we'll leave that for one sec and we'll start to pull this away. But, go to the other side and do the exact same thing that we just did on the other fender. And again, if the wheel is in the way, turn it the opposite side before you go all the way to the other side to realize you have to turn the wheel. So, ratchet with a Phillips is the other way and then you don't have to move any tires. Go ahead and just do that. You can also get a right angle impact attachment, but again, very low torque because if you use something high torque you will melt the heads off these screws and you'll be buying new ones after you get that off off the rest with your finger and what's that grab pull hey couple rocks highway souvenirs two hidden license plate screws right here they're just 10 mils pop them up put them in your uh extra screw drawer because you're never going to use them again. I guess there's two more down here because that makes sense. And that should come right off. Perfect. Next thing is to pull these 14s off from right here. Go ahead. Just like that. And biggest thing is leave one in on this side. Don't pull it all the way out. That way it doesn't drop and hit the floor the moment you take out the last one. And then we'll take out this one all the way. See how that's going to hold it? Now, if you have a friend with you, go ahead and each of you unthread the last two threads on each and pull this big heavy metal plate out. First thing we're going to do, pull out all the front tendrils. This has a lip on it, so it should hold it. Of course, my bad habit of leaving one thread in so that way I have to unthread them by hand so I don't lose my bolts. And then I'll usually use a foot or something, but let's pop that one out. This one is not as heavy as the other plate, so it's not so bad. So the last couple bolts for this are actually up here, so just leave this the way it is. Come up here, take that out over here. Take that out. Now, we know that there is an adaptive cruise control unit up here. What we're gonna do before we start prying on anything and trying to move it around, is we're actually gonna go and unplug that adaptive cruise control. So give me one sec. Right here is that fender liner that's behind the fender piece we unscrewed. Go ahead, take your Phillips and take these out. You're going to want to do that on both sides. One bolt here and there'll be one more right here. So if you fold this out, you'll see that opening up there. What you need to do is fold it out with your hand, put this screwdriver up there and feel for the little Phillips. And then once you get it, your screwdriver will be straight up and down. Go ahead and unscrew that screw all the way out. That is for right here. So that way we can separate this clip. If you don't pull it out, you'll break it. Going in from the top of the grill, using my thumb on the passenger side, you'll feel a great clip. Pop it out. There it is. See, there is your squeeze clip. It goes in like this. Press it in with your thumb, slide it out, put it off to the side. Now we know our adaptive cruise control is safely unplugged. So when we're undoing everything else, we don't have to worry about breaking it. No way I'm going to be able to film this as well as pop it out. See that clip that's 
I've wiped the dirt smudge off of, you have to go ahead and just like you've done with all those other little poppers, put your little flat blade or your little pry tool underneath there, pop the head and pull it out. Put that one off to the side, go ahead over to here, and then now this should be able to get worked when we're done away from the fender well. You don't have to do it right now, you can if you want, you can try and move the fender well out of the way. All I'm gonna do is after we break this loose, I'm going to, you can see it's gonna flex around it and we'll be fine. For right now, it'll just kinda hold it and you're not gonna break anything because we've got all the front screws out and that push tab that was right here, which looked like this. So right here, microfiber, do this because we're gonna be moving the bumper around. You don't want anything to scratch it up. Now that we've got that there, get your fingers around just like that. And then we just wanna come up and pop these tabs out. And I'm just gonna feel here, make sure there's no screw. But basically what we wanna do is just pop the rest of these tabs out. And again, just double checking. Yes, there's no screw there. With some vehicles there is, if you've done enough bottle, body panel fun, so. So take this, shove it in as far as you can. And then we're gonna come here and just like that. And then the last one, you get your hand down here and just pop it like that. This is now free. Now that we have this here, we wanna be careful, that's why we leave this rag up here. You're trying to use the one on each side just to keep these clips off the paint. You could go ahead and try and remove the whole thing, but the problem is it's got plastic clips in here. There's a big chance you're gonna break them and then you have to buy a whole bunch of new clips. So, now that we've got this, take a look at that. Boom. From here, we're gonna do this to both sides. Then, we're gonna, there's no way I can show this to you on camera probably. I'm gonna bring this light around. But, if you look in there, see that's your fog light. So go ahead, it's another duct tab, I can actually see it here. Just like you've been doing with the other ones, feel for the tab, compress it, and slide it off your fog light. That way we don't have to try and juggle with this bumper as soon as it's off. So see this clip right here? Grab it with your finger, fold down. You have to actually pull it towards you and push down. It is not a press clip down here, it is a pull on the tip and slide it out. From here, you can literally come up, this should be pretty light. Go ahead and just grab it like so. You can grab it with one person, just be careful, and go ahead and put it somewhere safe where you're not gonna scratch up your paint. I've set up a space on the tailgate with a whole bunch of uh, cloths and towels and stuff, AKA just a beach blanket. Make sure it's clean so it's not gonna scratch everything up. You can see how that literally just fits between the taillights. It's like it was made for it. So now that we've got that out of there, we'll be able to pop this out. But before we go ahead and we start putting everything together and whatnot like that, we need to come over here. We need to start removing stuff. So first thing you're gonna wanna do is literally walk up, pull that foam out pull that foam out. Now that we've done that, you're used to these little plastic clips. Let's go ahead here. These ones, keep them as spares because chances are one of them broke when you tried to pull it out. So now you're gonna have a couple extra. Take this one and we'll see if we've got another one here, but this should just come out. Oh, this is actually one unit here. Nice. Take a pair of scissors if you want. If not, take it. And you're literally just gonna bend it and break it out of the way because you're not gonna reuse it, so just like that. And then, just careful not to hurt yourself, but break it out of the way. See, is it almost there? Almost, one, yeah. One more clip behind. One more clip? Oh, we'll break it all out. Yeah, right here is the last clip, go ahead. This just comes in here, and we're just gonna pop it up. With this, go ahead, take out these 10 mils. You can do that. Leave that one on by three threads so this sensor just doesn't fall out of the vehicle. There you go. Now go ahead, hold this, and there. Put this away safely. You do not want that to break. When you're looking at your crash bar, you'll see the 16 mils up here. Leave the two on the top to last. There is actually Two more on the very bottom here, one here and one here, which are connected to these brackets. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is pop these two off first. Your hook and bracket will fall out. 
hook and bracket will follow it on that side just by releasing those two 16s. So, hey Mr. B, careful for those guys, they sting you. Anyways, let's scare them. Take that one out, and then go ahead and just crack this one a little bit loose. Just watch your hand there because of the B. And we're going to loosen that just a little bit. And then we're going to take this grenade outside, so that way Mr. B can go live his life outside. We're going to pull out these four 16s. As you can see, there's one inside. Take out the two inside ones to make your life easier, and then we'll take out the two top ones. We have our top bolt up here and our bottom bolt, which is in here. It's easiest to do the two bottom ones first. There we are, 17s. Pull those guys off first. And then this one, couple bolt threads over here. Couple bolt threads again. And then I'm gonna even hold it with my foot. All right, okay, and He's gonna pull that one out. We're gonna just move this free. Actually, what am I doing? It sits on the tow hooks. That's totally planned, by the way. We totally left the tow hook so it would hold this right now. I'm, I'm throwing that in there now. Next, two more bolts. Now we get to take off the two tow hooks. So take this one out, this one out, this bracket and the hook will come off, put them off to the side. Do that to both sides and we're good. This is how you know when you live by the ocean. <laughs> There's always a little bit of corrosion going on. Look at this, I did make a solid ground. Anyways, from here, we can go ahead and start uh, taking a look at our new bumper. Let's go and grab it and unwrap it and see how it's gonna bolt up. When you open your hardware kit, it can be a little bit like, what is that for? This is for the bull bar. You have six screws right here that are Allen key, and they also come with six big washers. We have some rubber spacers right here which will be used for when we're installing the bumper cover on, so that way it doesn't rub the paint. And then, right here is our new cruise control sensor bracket. These are for the light bar, and these are the spacers that take the space of our uh, hooks that you had before, our tow hooks on the front. They are heavy duty. Wait till you feel these things. They are a solid machined block. So, now that we have all this, we have all our parts kind of sent out so that way, or spread out so that way we know where they're going. Right here, go ahead. That, and then this one. Just grab those, put them somewhere safe. After you do that, just like we did before, these you just have to line up and squish out. So again, line them up so they're in line and then you can slowly work the bumper out from around them if you have two people one person can lift that side you can lift this side and like i said all you do is you'll notice it's bent over to the side one way flush and in line and then press out and keep doing that all the way around till you meet in the middle again just like that pressing in pressing in and there we go that's literally all there is to popping that off. Now that that's off, you can see we have this all exposed. Now, if you watch the other video and you're now gonna watch ours, we basically wanna connect the dots. So you could either A, go right up to there, which that's playing it gutsy because you don't wanna accidentally slip, but you could, you could literally follow this crease and you'd be fine. But they're saying just cut from loop to loop, which is kinda of like mid loop. So that way you have just a little bit of overhang. I will leave this up to you, play it to how safe you would like. And again, I'll have Kyle here film me as I'm doing it so that way you can see exactly the technique I'm using. And I find that it's easiest with an oscillating tool. You can do this either way, however you want.
glasses, hand protection. If you have the big thick metal, almost like welding gloves, use those and then have proper control of your grinder. And as you can see here, that's exactly what you're doing. Try and keep it nice and flush, clean it up. Whatever you do, I'd rather you leave a tiny bit more than hit the actual paint. So always kind of hold it back and I'll tell you why. If it bevels inward, you won't see it. If you go this way, you'll literally sand the paint in front. So always keep a negative angle on your grinder when you're doing this. Usually these, you can loosen this off. This one is not because it's too old, but if you loosen them, sometimes you can angle it and so you can actually hold it on an angle and go like that. And like I said, it's better to have a negative angle like this than a positive and then go ahead and sand into here and see it. Take a look at that. So we've gone ahead, we've spent a little bit of time. Again, spend the most time here. The next thing is, is if you have yourself some nice cleaner in a bottle, whether it's turtles, uh, tar and wax remover or whatnot, go ahead, shoot it down and just give it a quick wipe to get all that plastic off that flung off from there. After you've gone ahead and done that, and also don't worry if there's a tiny bit left, it's really gonna hide, you'll see when we're done. Now that we've gone to this point, what we need to do is fit it up. I'm not even gonna really show you too much. Get your Loctites ready. You'll notice that the bottom ones had red and the top ones had none. I'm actually gonna use a blue Loctite on the top ones and then I probably will clean up and re-red Loctite the um, bottom ones, those longer bolts. If you don't want to because you're worried about corrosion over time, just use blue and blue is gonna be more than enough. What I suggest you do is we're going to come over here and when we lift it up, just put the top bolt in. So get you and your friend to lift this up and you can go ahead and put it on. If you don't have a friend to do it, what you can do is balance it and use a jack and slowly jack it up into place using the center piece right there. Um, just be careful when you're moving it with the jack. And go. First one in, a few threads. And again, you're just putting it in that top hole. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'll give you a bolt. now what we're going to do is go grab our spacers and we're going to slide them in now because now that we just have those two now we'll be able to swing the bumper and it'll make it easier to line up those spacers and slide them up now the ones that are going in the front of the crash bar i'm using blue loctite on and the ones that are going in from the bottom of the shackle since they have to go through that big spacer they're going to need a tiny bit of red again you don't need to use red if you don't want to you could use blue but at least use Loctite because if you're going off-roading, this is a heavy piece. It's going to have your winch and everything in there. This is jumping around and this gets loose and you're going to winch yourself out of a hole, you'll rip your whole front bumper off. So as I said, you should be able to do this. And if you can, my hand's going to be in the way. See what I'm doing here? Just slide that in like that. And now just don't tighten anything up until all bolts are in. So with this loose and the spacers in on both sides, loosely put the bolts in and then make sure those are loosely put in and we'll start tightening this up Torx spec after. If I were you guys, I would do between 70 to 80 foot pounds on these. Do the two bottom ones first and then go to the other side, do the two bottom ones, then go inside and crank those to 70 to 80 as well. But do the ones inside last because this doesn't need to be impeded when you try to tighten those. If you tighten those, then when this is trying to suck it up, 
it will actually cause resistance and you might get a false torque spec and then you might be driving down the road and it'll fall off and you don't want that. So just something to consider. What you're gonna wanna do is pop this loose. Once you've done so, you can get access to these 10 mils. Pull out the three 10 mils. Take this piece of plastic and huck it across the shop. I wouldn't suggest putting it back in. Yes, it makes a really nice wall, but imagine the cooling you could receive if you removed it. If you get in an accident, they're gonna hit here or they're gonna hit here. This plastic, I hate to say it, is gonna do absolutely nothing. Right through here, go ahead, slide that out, put it off to the side. So the winch we're gonna be installing is a VR Evo. It's made by Warren, and this one comes with the synthetic. That's the French side. Anyways, the other thing you can, of course, install is this instead of the hook. And what this will allow you to do is, of course, it's a little bit stronger. It's a snatch block, and we'll give you a show of that. Anyways, we have that. We have the ferret. And as you can see, we have our ground wire. We have everything going on. What we really want to do is just now that we have this all prepared, get ready to slip it in. What we are going to do though is we're going to actually bolt the ferry right here first. Now I want to show you something before we do that. If you want to keep your license plate down there for some reason, you can get an adapter kit. Uh, I have it installed on my Jeep over here. I'm hoping I can actually show you in the dark. Yes, take a look at this. So this just bolts right behind the ferret and allows you to flip up and then access and flip down. I have a video on this. Go look up the Cascadia 4x4 video if you have that part and you can build that and add that in as you so wish. So let's go ahead. First thing we're gonna do is get our bolts ready and we're gonna bolt in the Warren Ferret. You can see one side is beautiful. One side has a sticker. Let's be honest. If you stick your fingers in here while it's moving, I have other questions like why are you so close to the vehicle when you're winching someone you shouldn't be that close all right because to tell you the truth if you've ever had a cable snap from a winch and you've watched it almost saw a tree in half then you'll know that's the last place your finger should be let alone your entire body this is gonna bolt up here how this is gonna happen we're gonna open this package you're gonna notice that there's a bolt a washer and then you're gonna have a uh, lock washer and the nut so how this Screw goes is bolt, lock washer, washer, and then the nut. I usually like to put the bolt head on the outside. We'll leave that up to you. And when you do this and you bring it in, I highly suggest if you want to, you could later on paint the uh, heads of the bolt, but don't swap out the hardware to something else. You don't want stainless because it'll be weaker and you definitely don't want to have a nice shiny black bolt because they tend to corrode easier. No Loctite needed. As you can see, we have the screw, we have the lock washer, and the washer on each. They will sit like this. Go ahead and put them like that. We're then going to lift this up and just put the bolts in through here. Thread on the nuts onto the other side. Have an 18 mil on a ratchet and an 18 mil box wrench to tighten them up. There's no real torque spec, just make sure that you compress this spring washer so it is completely compressed and flush and in line, so that way it's doing its job. You can go ahead and go a little He-Man because in the end, you're not gonna strip out the nut. 19 box wrench on that side. Go ahead and if you have one, use the Ooga Dooga cannon. Just like that, three Ooga Doogas and you're done. Each side. There we go. And if you take a look, we are completely flush and in line. That's a good one. Now, another thing to realize is when you first put these nuts on the back here, on your bolts, you might freak out and be like, there's not a whole lot of threads in there. Once you tighten them down, look at that. It's literally flush with the bolt. These are the exact measurement you want because we need that everything we can for the winch to come down here and you don't want any of those to be rubbing up against your winch, depending on the size. So. Now we can go ahead, lift our winch in through the top, and then we can slide our synthetic rope out through here. And then we'll prep those ones. Again, guess how these are all done out. Get your four bolts out, put your four spring washers on, your four regular washers, and have your nuts ready. 
take the nut off. It is a 13 mil. Go ahead and tie this on. This is for your ground. You want it pre-installed. So that way when you slip this in, you don't have to try and access this later. And in a second, I'll show you how to preload the nuts in here for installing your winch. Take a look at that. Once again, once you crank this thing down and it compresses the washer really well, it's flush and in line again. This is gonna be hard to see on the video, but right here is a little slot for these nuts to go in. All you do is you take this and slide them. One goes here, one goes in that side. Let's see, can you see it better here? Oh yeah, you sort of can. Slide it in there and slide it in here. Very important. After you slide these in, take a piece of tape, electrical tape, and tape these spots shut. I'll tell you why. One, if it gets snagged on the rope, doesn't matter, it's gonna rip it off. We're all good. And you can probably get in there afterwards to get them out. If you don't do this, when you go to tip that winch, or if it tips even a little bit, they fall out and you lose them inside the engine bay and you will cry. So like I said, just take a piece of tape and just cover it. And if you want, leave an extra piece, like leave it all the way out to here and fold it over, we call them buddy tabs. So that way you can just simply reach in there with a pair of pliers even if you have to and pull it off. Just take it, you're gonna rest it ever so gently and if you have a second pair of hands, this is going to be better. See how we have it on such an angle? Perfect. A little bit more. Right there. Oh, it's like it was made to be. Go ahead. Lay it flat. And yeah, just line it kind of flush and in line there. Put that down there. So that way it passes that sensor clip right here. I think it's just a protector clip. Anyways, that is now right there. Wow, that already looks so sick. Teach you another trick in one second for lining those nuts up. What you want to go grab is either a small magnet, you can do it with a magnet, or what you can use is a hook pick. We're going to slide in the center, we're going to move the nuts around. Before you do anything, just make sure you're not pinching, crimping any wires whatsoever, because if you do, you're going to cry. We know that's good, we know this is good, we know this is semi-lined up. All right. Grab your nuts, or your bolts, and grab your hook pick so we can go under the vehicle and line those up. The other thing I suggest doing is just going ahead right here and cutting this so it's out of the way. Now that this is out of the way, we can do this and feed this through our slot, which is right there. Because I'm telling you now, if we don't do this right now, it could be fun. Now what you would do is turn this sideways, it's now free spinning. Look at that. Now lock it back in. Leave that the way it is. Now we'll go underneath and we'll feed it in. When you're underneath, you might have to wrap your fingers around, but see what I'm doing there? I just pushed it with my knuckles over and we're looking straight up at the nut. If that nut is cockeyed and you can't get it in, what I suggest you do is take a hook pick and line it up with the hook pick so that way you can catch those threads. Go ahead and uh, just thread them into those nuts. We don't need blue Loctite because we're using a spring washer and a washer. So right here, as you can see, we've hand threaded this in. If I bring this over here, you can actually see the bolt, the lock washer, and the washer. Make sure we go diagonally, do that one, and then we'll cinch these all up. Now, if your bolts don't reach, what Warren has done is I gave you an extra pack of screws. These are a bit longer. What you can do is use these if um, you need them. Take the negative off your battery. This was something I had to figure out which they did not explain in any other video. You will have your airbag sensor right here. If you have a tall winch like so, this gets in the way. I highly suggest you relocate this because if you don't and you hit a big enough bump and for some reason your winch moves, or maybe it bucks while you're doing a pull, oh man, that could blow your airbags. You don't want that. I'm gonna move this out of the way so I can show you. Well, I've moved the winch out to the side. Now what I'm gonna do is actually slide this back to where it should be. How you get this is pull out the 10 mil here, and the 10 mil here, and the 10 mil in the center of there. 10 mil in the center, pops this out of the way, and 
we have it out of the way. Make sure that you take your battery off because if you bonk this hard enough with something, you will blow your airbags in your vehicle. Now that we've clarified that the ground is off our battery, you've taken that 10 mil out from there, move your sensor out of the way. Take these two 10 mils out and now slide your winch over like this. Next thing we're gonna do, you'll notice that it's on a pop tab right here. We're gonna go ahead grab our Christmas tree popper, pop this out, and then we're gonna bring it over here. I'm gonna show you me installing it. I just wanted to explain where I removed it from. Right here, put this on here, and then we'll put that there. First thing we wanna do, I'd go ahead and tighten that first nut back down, and then we're gonna self tap a screw in right here. I put my fingers in behind, there's nothing behind here. It's gonna be a very small self-tapper. There's actually one that comes with our bumper kit. I'm guessing that's exactly what this is for. They just don't have it listed and it's not in their video. When you're getting to the end, you'll notice that it was a little bit tough to pull those nuts off. Let's go ahead and throw a little bit of blue Loctite on the threads so that way it's gonna lock in that nut. Since we had two before, one thing you can do if you're also worried about that nut backing off ever, after we're done and we have our self tapper in here, go ahead, thread another nut on there, the nut that was on this side before, and it'll make sure that nut does not back out. Just a, a small little self tapping hole, so that way I have a guide hole, and take a look at that. It's gonna be perfect and in line. We're gonna go ahead, be very careful of your radiator, and again, we had that little screw that came in the package with our bumper actually, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put that in. In this bag, you'll notice we have two of these screws in here. And again, we don't know what they're for. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna use one of these. This came with this bumper. So what I'm gonna go ahead and use one of these screws since it's almost a self-tapper and we're going to tie it into this thin piece of metal. Since it's nice and flimsy, it should tie in there like butter. Make sure you don't over tighten it though, because if you do, it'll just strip out and start spinning. So if you're using an impact, once it's through, make sure you go in nice and close and just suck it right up. When in smooth, I even used a little bit of blue Loctite as lube. And now that that's in there with a little bit of blue, that should not back out. I put it in there and it's just a thick enough metal that I'm not worried about it spinning out. So now that we've gone ahead and done that, like I said, if you really want to be over cautious, go ahead, throw a little bit of blue on here and throw on another nut. You really don't need to. Let's go ahead, take that airbag sensor, line it back how it was, just like this. Go ahead and grab that metal cover so that way there's no chance of something else bonking it because you don't want it like a gravel truck to kick a rock and then it bounce off of it and then it go off. So put that little metal cover back on, tie the nut back on, and congratulations, we've relocated it and we can go back to mounting our winch. Take a look here. We've got that extra nut. Instead of using it here, I decided to put it right here. So now that I know that sensor and this plate won't start backing off because the last thing you want is that sensor bouncing around. Now that we've got that relocated, let's get back underneath and line those bolts up and get those tied in. I've already showed you that. So when I snap my fingers, the four bolts will be in and we'll be cranking them down. Went ahead, snugged them up once again. Just make sure those are squished and give these ones a little extra love. I went with the Ooga Dooga Cannon, three Ooga Dugas per bolt and we're good. Again, no real torque spec. Just make sure you're crushing these uh, washers and as long as those are crushed, we're good. They're not gonna back off. So. Now that that's done, this shouldn't be down here. We're gonna go ahead and feed that up and we'll find a wire path for our winch. Right here, we'll probably put one more strap right there just so it falls in in line. Right here, zap strap, follow this wiring harness. Strap it there and strap it in there. Kinda, see, you can see that red wire. And look at that, it comes off over here. If you want that extra level of protection, go buy some split loom, looks like this. You can squish it around both wires or each single one. Don't worry about the ground as much. Worst case scenario, it rubs in against something like this and it grounds out and you have a separate ground. It doesn't matter. This, on the other hand, you don't want this to get shorted out. So whatever you do, do not strap it on a seam. If it wiggles and chafes through that wire and shorts out, it's a direct short 
and will wreck your battery. You cannot fuse a winch. They just pull too much. So if you throw a fuse on there, it's going to melt it. Just something to keep in mind. This is an unfused link. So again, you could loom it with some split loom. Looks just like this. Heck, if you're never gonna use your block heater, <laughs> there's your split loom you could use and reloom that later. After you've got that ready, don't hook it up until everything is back together. Or if you want to test it, we can go ahead and do so. Make sure your airbag is back plugged in. And technically what we can do is we want to make sure in our case before we do it, we might want to plug in our cruise control module. But other than that, we could technically put our negative on, attach. Again, our positive, don't go to these. These are fused links. We have to go to the side of the battery right here or on top. If you don't and you go to one of these fused links, you will blow it the moment you use your fuse. You need to make sure you go off to the side. If you're not looking to do the bull bar, you can go ahead, just thread these in, and we're gonna go ahead, I'll give you the Allen key size in a second. I just wanna get these out of the way, but what you would do is just simply a little bit of blue Loctite and tighten it on. If you are gonna get the bull bar, but maybe yours is on backward like ours are, is, what you should do is just simply tie these in and cinch them up. So that way, it's just a decorative plate, keeps the threads nice and fresh. We have a lot of salt in the air here, so if we don't do this, you'll get rusty threads. HW8. One ugga dugga back every time, and that should leave you out. So you put three ugga duggas in, and then one ugga dug out. Just like that. Oh, too much. Eh, let's see. Does it want to come out? There. Doesn't even have to ugga dug up. Let's see, there. That's how you know you got a good, nice, tight fitting one. <laughs> and one more. Done. Let's see if I can get this one out. Perfect. So again, we'll just do that for now. So we got our CBI front bumper. It's time for a Baja Designs light bar. As you can see, it looks beautiful when you go to put it in. Make sure you have it saying Baja Designs in the right orientation and get your hardware ready. For right here, we have the washer and we have the bolt. Make sure when we bolt this, it spans out like so. So what I suggest you do is go ahead, throw this on, and I throw a tiny bit of blue Loctite on here so that way it helps hold the bolt from backing out over time. Or go to the hardware store and add yourself in some spring washers to help put tension on these bolts. So what I like to do is put the bolt in and make sure the light bar is standing on it. Why? The gravity of the light bar will usually level it out up here. This will make sure that one's level with there. You can go ahead and bolt these two up. Get them nice and tight now. Once you do that, we'll be able to slip this inside that bumper. When you do, let's show you which way the screws go. The screw, you'll see it has that little opening for the slot. Slide it in here and get these all loosely pressed in and then put the washer and the nut on each one of them. Look at how beautiful that looks. I literally, what I did is I went from these screws and I lined them up so that way you could see all the screws from this angle. I wanted to leave it flat so that way it looked nice. And wow, that looks mint. So what you do is you just snug these up, loosen it a couple turns, and then slide it in and out because there's an up slot on here and a forward slot on the bar itself right there. I moved it as close as I could forward, and then I literally just tried to balance these screws the best I could and make sure that it's level so it looks good, and then crank them down. These have nylocks on them, so don't need to do anything too special. Just crank down the nylock, and you're good to go. These are 11s, remember that. Now, 
I tighten these beforehand, but if you wanted to, you could get in here with a box wrench and tighten the light bar too. If you're worried, if there's too if it's too easy to pitch it, go ahead and get around that bracket with an 11 mil box wrench and tighten those two in the corners down as well. We're gonna make ourselves a poor man's Deitch connector. Go ahead and slide this onto here. This comes with your light bar. After you slide them on, you're gonna go ahead slide this all the way in as deep as it can go that way we know it's going to make a good connection then what you can go ahead and do is if you have a crimper go ahead and crimp this and then you'll come over here do the same right here and right there and then last but not least this one which is going to hold on to that sheath. This is our final sheath holder, which just kind of goes here and kind of wraps around. Again, those just go like that. Do not crimp the two barbs right here. They're going to lock into your connector. Now, if you're good at soldering, you could also just throw a little dab of solder right here just to make sure you're good. But that is what you want to do. We will copy the pin out of our other one, which I'll show you at the end. Just go ahead and crimp the rest of these. So right here, go ahead and just give these two a slight squeeze. That'll help hold from both angles. And then this, wrap it around, use your nail if you want. And then what we wanna do is wrap this as tight as we can. And you should be able to bend this. I know, disgusting nails, thanks Rich. And then come over here, bend this in a bit. That's gonna pinch it. Now, notice how I left a little bit here. If I were you and you have a soldering gun, go ahead and just do a tiny solder. If you do that, that's gonna help hold this in here for a long time and it'll tin it up. So like I said, if you want and you know how to solder, take this, press the soldering gun right here. It'll heat up this connector in the wire and then drop a tiny bit of solder in there so that way it solidifies this. So, like I said, just try to do this. And then, there we go. I'm just touching the wire lightly with it. Careful, it is gonna get warm. But, five, four, three, two, one, K cry. There we go. See how it's tinned up a little bit? Now, it's now one with that metal and it's not going to slide out again do what you will with this information don't ask me why i would have done this a little bit different but black is in a so go and slide black into a until it clicks oh look it clicked next white goes in the center which is b there, if these fins are plugged or not out, just go like this, perfect. And then go ahead and slide green into C. Okay, we're good. Next, squeeze up our waterproof piece right here and wiggle, wiggle, jiggle, jiggle until they go in. That is what's gonna waterproof these connectors and it just goes in like so. You can even wiggle the wire. Now, we'll see if it's gonna go in nice. Another thing you can do if you have a little silicone lube is throw it in there, but you're literally just trying to press these in so they lock in. I might even just take a bit of a flat blade I don't know yet and then when you're done this just clicks down locking your connector in and making sure these waterproof plugs don't come out and that's it use a flat blade not a pick and just use it to shove it down just a little bit see look at that as soon as you do that it'll sit if you use a pick there's a chance it'll pop out very easily there we go. 
I just want these fully in here. And by that, now we have the waterproof connection. Even if it is a little bit in there, it'll find its way out. There we go. See, I like to give it a pull test because then if it is going to pop out, it's going to pop out right now. There. As long as it's that far in, I'm having a good day. Go ahead, click down. Rubbers are now held in and will not back out. We'll plug this in, router wire. And then it was black. All I did is I did the good old electrical tape twist. After I did that, as you can see, my yellow cord is now black. From here, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna fish this down right where I ran my winch wire, which is down right here. And from right there, you can grab it from behind the headlight and it'll come down and you can actually dodge anything that could chafe this wire. So go ahead, do that. And I'm just gonna leave this off to the side here. I gotta go around the battery. Anyways, quickly feed this around the battery. I have an aux beam module. I'm gonna show you how it wires up to that. If not, you're gonna need a relay and a switch to run inside. I'm not gonna show you that today. I'm gonna really suggest you pick up one of these aux beam panels because if you wire one of these into your frontier or your vehicle, then every lighting accessory that you do on this, including if you upgrade your horn and whatnot, you can wire to this. I will post a link to this video in the description. Right there, squeeze it. It's gonna be waterproof, so it's gonna lock in there nice and tight. But what you do is you go ahead, squish it in until it locks in. As you can see, squish, lock, make sure it's lo actually locked in. But yeah, what I like to do is leave a little bit of a service loop here, so that way for some reason, you have to service anything in here. You don't have to completely pull out the wire. We'll go ahead and strap that down there. It doesn't have to be that big of a service loop. Just somewhere so that way you have a disconnect at the bumper. From there, I'm gonna go ahead and put the front end back on. Let's go ahead and put this plastic cover back on. And again, the reason why we have this all apart is because we're installing the CBI bumper. Let's go ahead and try this. So, we want to go right here. We can always plug in our fog lights on the way in. There we go, fog lights are in. Let's stretch this out. that little gray tab up there this is in the fender well by the way right here when you're going to slide in that corner piece where that screw goes through you have to make sure if you feel right there you'll feel it's like a little sandwich you have to slide it in the center of your sandwich or the center of your oreo don't let the clip go underneath it it needs to go into the little slot that's right there and by doing so you'll see you'll get that clean edge again if you miss it you will not get that clean edge. Go ahead, put the screw in, and then go to the other side and make sure that one goes in there too. These three plastic clips, as you've seen me doing, just make sure you sink them in once we have that. And now it's time to align the bumper to the plastic. And then we'll go ahead and do the final prep up here. Uh, you should also get that Phillips screw that one from the fender well that goes straight up so that way it holds the corner of the plastic in because once you do that, you could technically put your fenders back together. Put the two back underneath this plastic part so that way it's in. After you put the two there, go ahead. You can just 
clip this back in, line up your clips, and then we'll put the uh, screws back in here. Once you got those two in, put that push plug back in here, and from there we'll leave this until later. This will have to get trimmed, but we're not gonna do that quite yet. Next thing, go do this to the other side. Wow. Tie this screw in, tie that screw in, put that push tab back in here. So remember, keep the center popped, put it in, squish it in. After you do that, make sure these are all still sitting in there. We'll trim this later and put that screw in later. So hold off on that. Go ahead, go to the other side and tie that all back together. So right here, we got to put the this one and this one like that. And then you take this, put it through, and put your nylock nuts on. So go ahead, throw those on and through there. After we do that, we come over here, and we're gonna attach it to where our camera is. 11 mil box wrench on one side, crank it down on that side. He's gonna pull that out. And they're just two Phillips. It's crazy that little badge holds that all up. Then literally just tie in those two Phillips and you're good to go. So right there is your backup camera. You'll know because it's the black connector. Make sure you sync it in. And then that one right there is the adaptive cruise control. Again, might be the other way around. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. Now that that is, he will hold that there. I will bring this piece in because this is the easier way to do this. And we just slip that in right here. If you wanted to, you could even do a couple of these pop clips just to keep it in control as we do it. So just sink it in, squish, even if you put that one in, perfect. Now that we've got that started, we can start this out. So again, just line, this is the fun part. It's just lining these all back up, okay. Perfect. For the winch, bring it over here. And then all you do is slip that cotter pin back through, just like that. Or I should say the pin right here. And then slide this cotter pin, it just keeps it from not coming out. So you gotta pinch it with pliers, pinch it with your finger, and just get it back through that hole. So right here, this is our winch cable, putting it on our ground. Go ahead, do this. Get it started. Again, this one I'm not as worried about with the power because if this gets chafed or something, it just means that you have another ground. If the power wire gets chafed, it's bad news all around. So, we're gonna have to just figure out a direction for this. I might have to aim it straight up. We'll see in a second. But what we need to do is actually just leave this loose. We'll because when we put our battery terminal on, then it'll be tightened up. We just want to make sure it's at least on here and then we can negotiate it at the very end. We'll go ahead, do the same to this power right here. So loosen your power off and we'll add our winch right over here. So right here, what I did is power, ground, and then this goes into number two, which is our accessory. So what happens is when you first hit the button, what it's going to do is pop in just the center ones right here. And then when you actually click on the second switch, it lights up the whole thing. So if you watch, he's going to hit it. There is the accessory mode. Look at that. You could drive with that on. It's not very bright at all. And then it, when he hits the other button, oh yeah. That's what you want. And so, handed here, 
feel for it, wiggle, and pull out. Again, you have to have, my forearms are all right size. If you got massive forearms, good luck. Warm to the sky, so square up, and then you bring it inside. You'll feel for that connector from which you just exposed, and then slide it in, like I said, flat top up. You can tell you got it right, because look at that, we got power on here. Now, you should always have this tight. So what I'll actually do is I'll get Kyle just to hold this for one second. And then what we'll do is I will hit out. Oh, or sorry, that was in. Okay, let's go the other way. So as we can see, the motor's working properly. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it back in. There we go for right now. That can sit just like so. You could of course suck it in until it's up to here. Just a warning though, if you do, it's going to, like right now it's stuck on the farad right here. So you'd want this to turn sideways, go in and then suck right up to right there like that. Now this won't move. Just a warning though, if you do this uh, way for holding onto it rather than hooking it onto here, there's a cash 22. If you hook it onto here, and you tighten it up, then this gets marked up. If you do this, then over time this will wiggle and mark your ferret up. So, pick your poison. Now if you got that really baller Factor 55 piece, which is right here, what you do is we just open this up, we take a pair of snap ring pliers, and what we gotta do is put one ear in each clip, pull in, slide it out, put that clip off to the side, move it out towards the spot from which I'm trying to stop, put it in. Then I'll get him to hold it right there. We'll slide this in. And now we just grab that clip again and squeeze it and slip it in. After it's in, it looks like that. Now there is a little bit of a gap so it might only half get in there. All you do is you kind of put a small flat blade in there and ring the underside of the rim and it'll pop into the groove. And look at that thing. Holy smokes. Let me tighten that, up. that is beefy. So you can see it's got the rubber here. Now why is that such a big deal? Well, make sure who's ever holding its fingers are safe. And check this out. Does that not look sick? It holds and it's not gonna rub up your ferret. So that's the difference between the two pieces. I do have to warn you, what is that, 250 bucks? Something like that. Yeah. 250 bucks Canadian, just for this one piece. So, something to keep in mind. See that silver corner bolt? That's what you have to put in to hold this to here. Now, how you do it is you First, put in rubber gasket washers, which I pointed out to you earlier. And what you do is you keep adding those gasket washers until the space is equal on the bumper. So you, let's say you put two or three in here, try and put two or three on the other side so the space is the exact same. What we also did was I trimmed out that plastic so that way it fits properly behind here as you can see. So now that we have that all trimmed out, it's not hanging down right here. After you trim it, you can actually access those bolts. Otherwise, you're just gonna rub holes in your arms as you try and put it in. So you can see, we've already got a little bit of dirt on here, but we'll clean that up. Now, that's this entire bumper installed. We're gonna step back and take a look at it, but I wanna spot a couple things for you. One is, we noticed they gave us six washers. Now we're pretty sure those six washers are for this, for if you get the bull bar, so that way you can attach it. But, take a look at this gap. If you take a look here, it is not even. So if you're wondering about fitment and stuff for putting this on, we are taking a look and there's no way without compromising the structure of this that you could do that. Like we were thinking, well, would you put two spacers under one of them to make the gap equal or 
anything like that. What we're going to do is we're going to actually message the manufacturer. We're going to send some photos and see what they have to say because in their video, they don't explain or say anything about shimming it or anything like that. Mind you, they didn't mention anything about moving the airbag sensor either. Either way, we're super happy with the final result of the bumper. I think it looks great. I love the light bar. I love the winch. I love how the winch spot opens. Again, as long as you can get your arm in here so you can hook up your winch, this works great. But that being said, if you're not happy with this difference in gap, this is something that I can see would bother a few. Let's go ahead and give it the 50 foot back though, so that way you can see what it looks like. We'll take a look at the finished product, guys. That looks insane. It is now 2 a.m. in the morning. We're super happy with where we're at right now, but the place that we got the bumper from, we're gonna have them take a look and they're gonna see if we have a few tips and tricks for that last piece, because let's face it, that should be up a bit. There's nothing really I could see underneath that we could do tonight um, other than it rests on the frame on both sides. So it's not like we can mess too much with that. The only thing I could see to do is if we oblonged the two holes on the side by using a reamer bit and then added spacers to the one side to press the bumper down to try and lift it up a bit. But that's it. The front end and top end are all level. This bumper is not 100% level. So it's either a bad weld from when it was manufactured or it's just simply um, something going on with the frame, which it's not going to be the frame. Could be something simple that I'm not seeing tonight. If I do, you'll see a little edited piece at the end on how we fixed it. Thanks again for watching. Press a like if it helped you out and subscribe for more. And again, I have to say, as a finished product, if you have this truck, there is your new side view. It just looks insane. I love it. Anyways, thanks again for watching.